Miamians and listeners from around the world, today I bring you Frankie Ruiz. Frankie is a Nike Run Club coach and a cross-country head coach at Belen Jesuit Preparatory School. He is also the founder of the super popular Brickle Run Club. He will talk to us about what makes the Brickle Run Club unique and how it enhances the lives of everyday Miamians. Welcome to Miami Global Net Podcast, where we showcase the people and organizations that support Miami's international landscape. Learn from local business owners, startups, diplomats, and community leaders. Get to know the tools and services that are out there that help you invest and grow in South Florida. Miami is a true global city where one can live and do business with a global reach. Frankie, thank you for joining us today. A pleasure. How are you doing? I'm pretty good, man. I'm pretty good. How about you? Doing good. Doing good. Thank you for joining me uh, this late. To uh, I know it's been a full day for everyone. <laughs> it's early. It's early. It's early. Depends which way you look at it. True. 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 So tell us a little bit about yourself. Are you originally from Miami or you come from somewhere? What's? I am born and raised in the 305. I uh, and, and for real, because I was born at Mercy Hospital, and uh, that is one of the few hospitals in, in the actual city of Miami. Um, but I, uh, I was uh, raised here. I went to school here. I went to college at, uh, at, at FIU. So I've never, I've never left for more than a couple weeks um, since, uh, as far as I can remember, I've been in Miami in, um, in all senses uh, of the word. Nice. And you went to, you went to Belen. I went to Belen. Yeah. It's funny because a lot of people will ask you what school you went to. And most people say uh -huh. what university, um, I tend to, to answer with, uh, with Belen. That's, that's, I guess a Miami thing too, but I went to Belen from sixth through 12th grade before that I was in public school. And then after Belen, I went to FIU and did my, uh, my undergrad and my master's, uh, there as well. For those, for those that don't know, the reason I point out Belen is because Belen is a high school and I am from Columbus, which is also a high school. And, and uh, this is a good opportunity to show that we are friends. <laughs> absolutely. 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 So tell us a little bit about the Brickle Running Club. Yeah, man. Uh, so, so like I said, I, I've been, I've been in Miami my whole life and, and since I, I can, as far back as I can remember, um, I paid attention to uh, a lot of details in Miami. And, and one detail that always uh, captured my imagination was the idea that, that uh, running was a sport that um, should be present in Miami in a, in a very prolific and, and um, uh, popular uh, manner. And I always had that kind of that bug inside me. And after I started the Miami marathon, I realized that to, complete that ecosystem of, of building new new runners and bringing new new folks into a health and and fitness uh, lifestyle I needed to to give them a, a an alternative option from the ones that that were present at the time so we created this extraordinarily social organic um, club and which uh, which at the time was actually the South Beach Run Club that was our first one out out in Miami Beach together with Nike. And this was back, uh, gosh, almost 12 years ago. And, um, and so that, that club was, was, a, an, almost an instant success. Um, you know, maybe not the first night, uh, but, um, about a year into it, uh, we started to see the numbers exponentially grow. It was, a, it was a free, or it still is a free weekly run club where people just come and run about three, three and a half miles. And, uh, and then after hang out, uh, and, and do a little, a little bit of uh, exercise and core and some stuff we added here and there. And so this became kind of a new trend in Miami and, and it became something that others copied, which I thought was, uh, was a, a, a great thing because that's what we wanted. We wanted to turn running into something accessible to everyone, which is what running typically is, is for a lot of folks. You don't need a lot of equipment. You don't need a lot of money to do. And so running, started to grow and we identified another, another area that needed, um, a, a club. So we expanded to Brickle. Uh, we had uh, Baptist health become the title sponsor of, of the group. And, um, we started off same thing, five, six, seven, eight people. And it quickly 
escalated from there and we're almost 11 years old and our group prior to the pandemic was seeing on average 400 between three and 400 runners uh, every Tuesday night rain or shine so between Brickell and South Beach uh, we also we realized it was more of a need in some of the other f- uh, places so we expanded to the Gables to West Kendall Kendall Homestead uh, Doral even Weston and um, and those um, those clubs uh, have have uh, been pretty consistent in in their growth and in and in and in their offering, so that we touch about a thousand folks in South Florida every single week entirely for free, no cost to the runner, um, entirely supported by not just passionate uh, uh, runners like myself, but um, some great corporate partners: Baptist Health, Nike, um, uh, Michelob Ultra. And uh, and deliver lean and a few others that have have come on board as as of late. So um, so yeah. So Brickle has the Brickle Run Club. One thing I'll say, and sorry for the long explanation here, what Brickle Run Club is, but it filled the void in Miami for something other than nightlife, and um, you know what Miami was typically known for. It became something healthy to do on a Tuesday night, something that was open to everyone. No matter your race, no matter your your social your 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 economic background, no matter what neighborhood you were from, you were invited to these these uh, run clubs, and uh, and it and became it became the thing to do, and it, I think it still is. Hopefully, <laughs> once this pandemic uh, passes, we can we can jump back into this. But it was it became it started to become the thing you did to become more Miami, and I think that that's uh, you know pretty special. So glad to be part of that. I knew about the running club in Brickle. I didn't know that you you had this network of of running clubs all over South Florida, basically. And um, do you have? Is there a team? Or do you attend all these runs? Well, I I'm I'm, I'm ashamed to say that that um, a lot of the back end stuff gets done by myself. Um, I wish I was a little better at organizing some of the, the, the back end stuff, but, um, but I do have a team that, that goes to, to, cause there's only seven days in a week. Right. Yeah. Um, and I have eight, eight different run clubs. So there's, there's, um, there's an eighth day there somewhere, but no, we, we tip, we do these things Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So some nights there's two clubs happening or most nights there's two clubs happening. For instance, on Tuesday night, there's one in Brooklyn, and one in Homestead. So the one in Homestead has, uh, two to three other what we call pacers and coordinators and they um, they're paid positions believe it or not because that's that's our, our business model um, but uh, and they don't nearly pay as much as as they require or as the job requires but they're there rain or shine we never cancel these things unless there's a pandemic um, and <laughs> I have to keep reminding myself because in the 10 plus years of doing run clubs we wouldn't even cancel for a hurricane I mean we were we wanted never, we always wanted to be that consistent thing that people can always turn to. Um, so, um, so yeah, so I, to answer your question, I have about 24 to 26 people that are all involved in, in organizing these groups uh, on, a, on a weekly basis. Yeah. Impressive. One of the things I, I heard one of your talks, you mentioned that at the beginning of each run, there is like a little bit of, get to know your people to your left and to your right. Right. Which is, mm-hmm. which is very popular that people actually like to go because of that aspect of it as well. It's like one of those things that sure. brings people like one of those little differences that, that make it unique. No. Yeah. And I, I think so. So Miami has a lot of, a lot of um, stereotype and, and there's jokes about things. And then there's also things that, that people talk and criticize about the people that live here. And one of those is, is that we can, we tend to be a little closed to new people entering our little circles, whether they're family circles or friendship circles or whatever they may be. And, and it, and it's tough for the many transplants that end up in Miami to feel connected uh, to, to the city. And, and uh, I wanted to, to break that, um, you know, that pattern it didn't take much 15, 20 seconds before each run club, allowing each person to take a moment to acknowledge one another and, and say hi and exchange a name. And, and, um, 
again, pre-pandemic, shake a hand or give a high five. And that, I think, started to be one of the favorite parts of the run. I, I, I quickly created a model that basically, or I shouldn't say model, but some, some promotional line that we use it from time to time, which is the best part of the run isn't the run. And, and it was that part for a lot of folks. Um, we, we hear stories of people. I met my wife at Run Club, for instance, myself personally, but I've heard so many other stories like that. You know, you hear people that landed in Miami and felt lost, depressed, uh, confused. They're here maybe for a new job or looking for a new opportunity. And they met somebody that changed their whole perspective of Miami because, again, they had a friend here. And, uh, and, it, and it was a healthy friend because typically if you came out to run club, you were, maybe you didn't have to be a, you don't have to be a health nut or, you know, crazy running freak. Uh, but you, you typically lean on the side of, of a healthier life. So you already had that in common with the, the person, you know, I think when I look back at one of the things that made us successful from the beginning was again, filling that void for Miami and or a new visitor to Miami to feel welcomed and and nobody likes to not know somebody someplace and we would quickly change that so did you meet your wife at one of your own running clubs yeah my, my wife the story of my wife uh, and i connecting is 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 fun it's actually even entrepreneurial in a, in a sense she was coming to south beach run club i think she had broken up with a boyfriend and she was coming on a regular basis to to run at south beach and um um she uh, uh, messages me one day on Facebook, so I can I can say that with a straight face. She she messaged me first, um, but <laughs> she didn't message me to get to know me as a as a uh, you know as a boyfriend or anything. She messaged me because she was interested in starting a run club of her own, and um, and I thought you know what you've been coming long enough to to run club. You're pretty, and that you know that that tends to help uh, you know. Uh, for her to start a running club. I'm sure a bunch of guys would enjoy coming in a run club with a pretty girl leading. And, uh, and, and I thought, you know what, you have a lot of energy. It sounds like, you know what you're doing. Uh, I'll coach you through kind of a franchise, so to speak. And she opened up the Weston run club. I got her Baptist health as a sponsor. And, um, the rest is history after that, that she started that. And I saw how successful she was at running that under my sort of umbrella I got to know her a little better and, uh, you know, we, we became friends and now we're expecting our second child in October. So congratulations. That's amazing. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to have to start running in these clubs if I want to find someone. <laughs> I, I tell people, listen, the, 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 the ratio is probably two to one. All right. At times two girls for every one guy, you know, I'll leave that there. Um, but the, the plethora of ages and life stages and, uh, viewpoints and everything that a running group brings together is, is awesome. Like, I, I don't, I don't mean this in a derogatory manner to anybody that's been at run club and for a while and hasn't found somebody, but I often say, if you can't find someone at run club, you're probably not going to do a great job finding them somewhere else because one, people are very friendly Two, there's a big group or to choose from, let's just say. There's a lot of different people. Um, and, uh, and last part of it is that, and this goes with the friendliness, is when you're in a running setting, I don't care what car you drive. I'm not worried about what clothes you're wearing. I might look at your running shoes at most. But there isn't these sort of facades and these walls and these you know, uh, screens that people put up. And so the person is sweating, they smell, <laughs> maybe, um, you know, so, so what you're meeting is a real person, uh, not, you know, not a bunch, someone behind a bunch of, of different curtains. So, so it, can you do me like a little journey, like experience journey, like from finding you on Facebook or, or something and then showing up, what can I expect? Do I have to, is it, am I running with the group? Is it, is it everybody running at the same time? Is it spread out? What, what can I experience when I go? So, so look, I, I think that those questions are awesome questions to ask because we, we take it for granted that, that um, you know, people know exactly what, what a run club is. There's a lot of assumptions, right? Um, and, and my best way to answer it is you got to come see it. But 
Mm. Let's just say right now you can't see it because we're on pause for, for this stuff. So I got to describe what I feel is a typical interaction that, that a person has with a run club. Um, the first thing that, that a person will probably want to do is, um, you know, buy yourself a pair of running shoes and have to be expensive ones, but you don't want to show up in your work clothes either. Um, you know, you want, you want to, want to, I don't want to say look the part, but you, shorts and a t-shirt and, and running shoes. Right. And, you know, for, for women, maybe a sports bra and, 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 um, some, some women like to run in, in leggings or whatnot, but simple yeah. stuff, you know, the type of stuff you would wear to the gym. Uh, and when you show up, we actually, uh, divide the groups by pace. If it's your first night and you have absolutely no clue what pace you are, you would go out with the first group, which is actually the least fast group. I don't even like to call it the slow group. It's the least fast group. It's more, let's, let's call it the most social group. And, and that group goes out first and our routes are usually out and back. So the person goes out, um, the pacer, we call them, goes out uh, about a mile and a half or so, a little bit over that. It's Like I said, the distance fluctuates between three and three and a half miles. But you can turn around wherever you want, right? Like nobody's going to yell at you. Nobody's going to scream at you. You can go as fast or as slow as you want. But you go out with that group. But I can tell you, you know, been doing this long enough that nobody really stays to the pace of the group. Like they kind of just move around a little bit. But you're generally surrounded by people that are not the fastest in the whole group. And so this, this, um, journey, let's just say during that, that, uh, three and a half miles, or maybe in your case, you're just going to go out and say, you know what, I'm turning around at 10 minutes, or I'm going to turn around uh, at a mile or whatnot. They come back to where we started and they come back. We have a bottle of water for you. Uh, we do some stretching, some core exercise. We usually do some giveaways and you're done. And that last, this whole time lasts about an hour in total when it's all said and done. So at seven o'clock we start and we're done by about eight, eight 15. Um, but the main thing I want you to realize from it, from it all is that nobody's sitting there checking off a box to see if you're a real runner or if you're fast or what time you ran It has nothing to do with that. In fact, the majority of our runners would probably not even call themselves runners. I, on the other hand, as a coach, I always say, if you have a body, you're a runner. You know, I don't need, there's nothing, I don't need to specifically determine, all right, well, so-and-so has run a hundred miles. Now he's officially a runner or so-and-so has run a marathon. Now he's officially a runner. Basically that day, you're everybody's a person. Everyone is more or less in the same level. And I can tell you the majority actually are in the same level. Now, after you do it a few weeks in a row, you'll start to see you're going to get faster. Maybe you'll go out with the next group or the group after that, we typically break up into three to four groups. And, um, it's what I call first timer friendly and second timer friendly. Cause I, the first time anybody would do something for one time, but if you come back for a second time, I promise you're going to be pretty hooked on this idea of at least once a week running with a group of people through different routes. We take you, um, to sometimes we run north sometimes we'll run into the key sometimes we'll run uh down bayshore drive sometimes we run the underline i like to show people miami i in fact we run up and down the river as jagged as the connections are back there we come and go behind buildings around buildings and um and show people parts of miami they wouldn't otherwise run at seven o'clock at night on a tuesday night um and you're surrounded by so many people that typically the energy of the group pushes you through that, um, that night's run. Um, you know, you finish fired up, you finish like you, you feel part of something bigger than yourself. Uh, it's, it's pretty unique, you know, and, and by the way, Miami is considered to have one of the largest run clubs in the world. Um, hard wow. to verify this, but we've heard it from so many others. I've got people in the industry and, and when they come experience the run club here, they're like, I had no idea. I seen the photos, but I didn't know it was this big on a regular basis, whether it's raining or not outside of pandemic. Um, there are people showing up every single Tuesday night. And it's crazy because we say start time is at seven at six fifty. There's maybe like 20 people. And in typical Miami fashion, everybody shows up at seven o'clock, like as if they all like, all timed it to be socially, you know, on their social, 
you know, on timeness. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty cool, cool thing to experience for sure. So, so the culture of the whole running club seems to be very, I like that there's nobody checking. There's no pressure to perform a certain way. It's there's, there's a social component. There's a ability to make friends It's take it at your own pace and enjoy. I'm sure the Miami scenery, which is our, you know, our skyline are, it's fantastic and potentially make friends. It seems to me like a very, like, like a very like light, fun um, environment that you've created. That's what it is. So I've noticed also that you have a, a social component to it, but I mean, as in like a community service component to it. I saw there on, on Do you want to tell us a little bit about. The yeah. So, that? so I think, I think there's, um, there's a responsibility for a group of our size to um, apply the, the, the sense of community to other um, things that might be happening around the city. So I'm, I'm very civic minded in, in, in so many different facets, but one that I typically um, gravitate towards is the details in our city, like our cleanliness. Um, uh, and so we've, been, we've, we've taken part in several, um, uh, what we call plogging events. And basically that Tuesday night, once a quarter, uh, we will bring garbage bags out and um, encourage runners on their run to pick up garbage. So they're running, squatting, grabbing litter from the ground, putting it in a bag and bringing it back to the finish line. And we've collected pickup trucks and dump trucks filled with, with litter. And it's, it's been pretty neat to see because I think runners have, have um, a, a unique perspective of their city because they're on the ground, right? You drive up and down Brickell Avenue all the time and you don't realize that there's bottles and cigarette butts and sure. straws and, and, you know, uh, cans stuffed into bushes and gutters and all that. And now that we've done this stuff several for several years now, I think the runners have started to realize, gosh, we do have a problem in Miami. We live so close to the Bay and, uh, and, and we treat our city, uh, like, you know, like a garbage can. And so that, that's been one thing we've done, uh, anytime there's a natural disaster of any sort that we think affects the international community, since we've got such a diverse group of runners, we'll have can drives, whether it's a hurricane in Latin America or an earthquake or something else we've engaged throughout the years in, in that. Um, so I don't want to say we hold our finger up to the wind and we see what, what the need is, but typically it's what, what is necessary in the community for us to, to help in. That's what we've engaged in. So it, it, it definitely has that feel good um, element to it of service. I have to add to that and say, there's a lot of people that look to do these kind of things, you know, and I have a lot of friends that want to meet people. They want to get involved. And sometimes it's, hard to find things to do and and in this this running club seems to provide you with a lot of things the networking component making friends and then also contributing to society and to a lot of people want to give back to the community that they live in mm -hmm. so this is a yeah. great way to do it by by being part of this of this running club um Absolutely. so your your passion for running goes beyond the the running club now you are you are you coach at belen <laughs> yeah with the head coach there right and then the Nike, the Nike Run Club coach. You want to tell us a little bit about? Yeah, so those two? so I coach. I coach at the high school. Uh, that's that's what I've been doing. Gosh, I don't know how many years now, but um, I I think I, I told you this before we started, but I'll, I'll repeat this, which is basically if someone were to give me a hundred million dollars in a bag and said, "Here, you don't have to work another day in your life," I would still say, "Well, about five or six hours a day, I'm going to dedicate it to coaching high school kids." Just I find it not only rewarding, but um, it's it's something that I get a lot out of. Um, uh, you know, not, not just I actually run with them sometimes, but I get a lot out of it because I learn so much from the kids that I'm able to pass on some of that knowledge and and inspiration and motivation to to adults. So I, I really do try to bring that kind of energy to everything else I do. So I, 
I hope to be able to do coaching for, for a long time. Uh, and then, uh, as far as, um, as far as the, uh, Nike run club stuff, it's so basically what I am is I'm, I'm appointed or hired by Nike to be their representative in the Southeast, uh, as a brand for all things running. And that could be things on their app. It could be ads. It could be groups. It could be run clubs. It can be in just so many different things. This week I was on with them and we did some stuff for Dick Sporting Goods. And I talk a little bit about running and Miami and shoes and all the things that, that are tied into running. And uh, so they call you basically the Southeast uh, run club coach for, um, for Nike's. At the beginning, you mentioned the marathon, the, the Miami Marathon. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? You, you've done a lot of marathons. Was the marathon before the run, the Brickle yeah. Running Club? Yeah, 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 yeah. The Miami Marathon was like the, my my first uh, big endeavor as a 20, 20 or twenty one year old, however old I was. Uh, I started with thirty four hundred runners with two partners of mine. And, um, and we created, uh, the Miami tropical marathon at the time, uh, which, uh, quickly became a 10,000 person race and then 15,000 person race and a 20,000 person event. And now somewhere in the neighborhood of 22 to 25,000 runners gather every January or early February here in Miami to do a full marathon, half marathon and a 5k. And I helped basically put all those pieces together now for 18 years and, and, and going. And that is uh, an economic engine to the city. It's, uh, it's a, a big part of, um, of the city's DNA at this point. It's one of the signature events. It's up there with you know, the Art Basel and, and uh, boat shows and uh, Coconut Grove Arts Festivals and South Beach Wine Food Festival and, um, you know, the Super Bowl when it comes and goes. Uh, Miami Marathon is just one of those other economic engines uh, for, for our city. And I'm happy to say I was part of the beginnings of this. You, you also coach, like one-on-one -on -one coaching or in group coaching? Yeah. yeah. Aside from the school? Yeah. I coach, uh, I coach a few uh, adult uh, runners uh, that are either trying to lose weight and, and find their way in running, or I coach a couple of runners that are just looking to take their running up a notch or two, coach them privately through an app that actually exists. <laughs> and I'll meet with them from time to time. It's an app that exists just for, for um, run coaches. And, um, and basically, I should say, it's not, it's not where I direct most of my attention, but I'm especially as of late because of, of Corona, I find myself um, helping out a lot of new runners that have, have started to explore running. So it's, it, I'm starting to find my passion in that as well. Uh, it's not something I, I saw myself doing uh, five or six years ago, put most of my coaching energy into high school, but I'm starting to like helping out some adults, especially down here in South Florida, that, that they can use a little bit of direction when it comes to running. That's cool. A lot of people need that, that help, that mindset preparation so they can yeah. actually push through their, their goals. Yeah. Um, you also mentioned you design courses. Sure. Yes. So I, I'm, I'm also hired from time to time by, by groups, uh, nonprofit groups, uh, for-profit groups, all kinds of, uh, of companies that hire me to help them organize a, a 5K or a triathlon or some other special event, uh, sometimes private events that um, entails figuring out a route uh, at a certain distance, whether it's a mile or 5K or a half marathon or some other distance. I will help them navigate the routes that the city might, might approve or um, a route that might be a little less expensive or more expensive to, to be more appealing. It's, a, it's an art, but it's something that I do for the Miami Marathon constantly as construction continues to alter uh, our, our routes throughout the years. And so I've sort of found a little niche in, in, that, in doing that down here in South Florida. Before, before we go, I don't want to keep you too long. Two things. Two things. Oh, good. The sun's almost up. Sun is... <laughs> it's late. It's late, but it's good. It's good. It's good. No, we're good. Whatever you need. It's still a good time. 
Um, one thing is if I hadn't seen your Miami TEDx talk, I would have I told that. you that's when I was young. That's when I was young. Right. That's when I had a little bit more hair. Well, you did great though. You, yeah. I didn't notice the hair, but you did great. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I've been shaving my head since I was 10. <laughs> <laughs> but if I would have seen it, I would have not known that that slogan you have in your shirt is uh is part of your of the initiative and also if you could tell us where we can find you and how to reach you um so people can people that are listening could be like we're you know i'm going to definitely put it in the show notes but if you want to also tell us so i'm I'm pretty accessible i find i find that in in a place like miami everyone everyone can get a hold of of someone because they know someone that knows someone else and they can get they can get in touch with that person. In my case, you don't have to try too hard. I've got my LinkedIn, my Instagram, my Facebook. I, I have a TikTok account, but but I don't have anything on there. So if you're that young, you know, try maybe maybe Twitter or something. But you can you can follow me on any of those. Under Frankie Ruiz. Yeah, Frankie Ruiz. Yeah, Frankie Ruiz pretty much in all of all those uh, outlets. You can follow the Brickle Run Club or the South Beach Run Club or the Kendall, all of them have their own accounts on Instagram. And then we have the runclubnetwork.com page or the werunmiami.com page that has more info. And if you're interested in the Miami Marathon, you can just Google Miami Marathon and we're the only marathon in Miami. For those that are listening uh, and hearing the word marathon, uh, it might scare you, but it's 26.2 miles and there's only one race in Miami with 26.2 miles. But we also have a half marathon, which is half that distance. And we have a 5K, which is 3.1 miles. So, yeah, you can, you can find me through any of those, um, those outlets. And hopefully uh, I'll see you at a start line or, or at a finish line some, somewhere. Perfect. Thank you. And what about the slogan? We run. Yeah, so we got We Run Miami. We've got We Run Brickle. I've got, yeah, actually, the shirt says. Oh, yeah, We Run Brickle. We Run Brickle. I have we Run Miami. It's something I, I also have a personal slogan called Don't Stop. But anytime you'll see. See my name, you'll see Don't Stop, and we run Miami as well. So cool, cool. I know it has that double meaning, right? We run Miami, but we also run Miami. Like <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> cool. Thank Absolutely. you so much for joining us. Yeah, man. Thanks. Thanks for having me. And uh and I appreciate what you're doing for our city, helping helping tell the 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 story of the the little things people don't don't know about the city. I th- thank you for supporting my my project as well. <laughs> and for the work that thank you've you. done. I know there's a lot of a lot of hours and a lot of passion dedicated to all, all those free runs that you put up for people. You know, a lot of people see that, that, the, that, but the back end, your day to day, you know, it's, it's to be thankful, thankful for. So thank you. Thank you.